can take you anywhere Turn the pages and you'll be there Come on, join us, you'll see We're reading with Kevin Hi, friends, and thank you for joining us for another Read with Carolee, where we have fantastic authors from across the U.S., around the world, and maybe even down the street from you. You never know where we'll be popping up next. And today we have a very fantastic author from... Oh, actually, I'm not going to give that away just yet. Her name is Janine Sanders, and she is joining us from... J Janine, can you let us know where you are joining us from today? I think when I, when I talk, my voice might give it away. I'm Australian, so I'm, <laughs> I'm actually speaking to you today from um, near Melbourne, just outside Melbourne. Um, in Australia. Awesome. Uh, you know, we have been touching base with a lot of um, authors from Australia, and we are so glad to have you today. So I am very interested in the book that you are going to read today. It's the Not So Perfect Princess, and I wore my she Princess of Power shirt in solidarity and Great. I am so I, I I'm ready to get right into this book because it has a very yeah. special message especially for our young girls so Janine I'm going to turn it over to you so that you could dive right into the story so take okay, it away Janine girls. Sanders <laughs> thank you okay this book is called the not so perfect princess and the not so dreadful dragon and it's written by me, and it's been illustrated by Paula Becker. So I'm going to start. Princess Petal was not the perfect princess. In fact, she was quite the opposite. She was everything a perfect princess was not supposed to be. Her princess dresses were torn and scruffy from climbing the palace walls. She wore an old woolly hat instead of a golden crown. Her knees and elbows were covered in scratches from wrestling baby bears. And sitting comfortably on her hip was a silver sword, just in case. Princess Petal was not like other princesses. She wasn't delicate like the petal of a flower. She wasn't quiet like a snowflake on a cold winter's day. And she certainly wasn't scared of fire-breathing dragons. Princess Petal was the strongest, loudest, and bravest princess in all the land. One day, when Princess Petal was out hiking in the forest, looking for bears, she heard a strange sound coming from a rocky outcrop. First there was a sniff, then there was a snort, then there was the loudest boo-hoo, boo-hoo she had ever heard, so loud that Princess Petal was knocked sideways. Being the strongest, loudest and bravest princess in all the land, Princess Petal picked herself up, brushed herself off and strode fearlessly towards the crying. Lying just outside a large cave, curled up in a shiny ball of green and gold scales, was the most miserable looking dragon Princess Petal had ever seen. Oh dear me, she said in a soft voice, a voice much softer than she usually used with fire breathing dragons. Whatever is the matter? The gloomy dragon looked up and gave a gigantic sniff. Everyone thinks dragons are dreadful and mean and unkind, he sighed. But I'm not. I'm kind and caring and friendly. I love dress-ups and dancing and collecting sparkly things. 
all the villagers are scared of me and run away whenever I come down from the mountain to play. Princess Petal leaned in closer and patted the dragon scales. There, there, she soothed. I understand, I understand exactly how you feel. Everyone thinks princesses should be quiet and shy and do delicate things like knit and pick flowers. But I'm brave and strong and fierce and I love to climb walls and trees and wrestle bears. The dragon's big eyes looked at Princess Petal suspiciously. Are you sure you are a princess, he asked. I don't want to be unkind, but you don't look like a princess. Well, said Princess Petal, standing a little bit taller with her hands on her hips, you don't look like a fierce, fire-breathing dragon. That's because I'm not, sniffed the dragon. I'm not fierce and I'm not very brave, but I am lonely and I am sad. Princess Petal leaned in a little closer and gave the dragon a couple of solid pats on the back. I have an idea, she said loudly. Why don't you come home to my house for a play? There are loads of sparkly things in the castle, like diamond necklaces and ruby rings and golden crowns. And if you like, we can play dress ups and dance. The dragon sat up a little straighter and blinked away two large tears. Then the not-so-dreadful dragon leapt up gleefully and began to dance. The ground rumbled and the rocks began to crumble as he jumped around with joy. Stop! shouted Princess Petal above the din. You'll start a landslide. So the not-so-dreadful dragon stopped his stomping and lowered his head. Hop on, he said, if you are brave enough. Ha! scoffed Princess Petal. I'm the bravest princess in all the land. Let's go. And so it was. Princess Petal sat snugly just behind the dragon's horns. Then the not so dreadful dragon stretched out his magnificent wings and flew down the mountain path. Whee! shouted Princess Petal louder than she had ever shouted wee before. I'm flying. After a perfect landing on a grassy field, Princess Petal and the not so dreadful dragon marched hand in talon through the wooden gate and into the castle gardens. Good afternoon, mother. Good afternoon, father, said Princess Petal. I have a new friend I'd like you to meet. Eee! screamed the queen, ducking under the table. Ah, cried the king, running for the bushes. Get that dragon out of here. It will gobble us up and burn down the castle. The not so dreadful dragon's head hung low. He rolled into a shiny ball and lay sadly at the base of Princess Petal's feet. A small sob escaped from his snout. Princess Petal stood straight and tall and with her hands on her hips, turned to her parents. This dragon is my friend, she announced fiercely. And he is not dreadful and he is not scary and he will not gobble you up and burn down the castle. My friend is kind and gentle and he likes dress ups and sparkly things. Then she knelt down and looked into the dragon's sad eyes. You are perfect just the way you are, she said. You are kind and you are caring and you are the perfect friend for me. The queen came out from beneath the table and the king peeked out from behind a bush. Really? they said together. Yes, said Princess Petal. Really? Just because you think someone is something does not mean they actually are. Everyone thinks princesses should be quiet and delicate and perfect. Well, I'm not. I'm brave and strong and loud and I'm smart and I'm funny. I'm many things and I'm perfect just the way I am. The dragon rose to his feet and held Princess Petal's hand. You are perfect just the way you are, he said. 
You are wise and kind and brave, and you are the perfect friend for me. And so it was. From that day forward, the not-so-dreadful dragon and the not-so-perfect princess became best friends forever. Sometimes they wrestle bears, and sometimes they played dress-ups, and sometimes they just hung out together. But whatever they did and wherever they went, they were always perfectly who they were meant to be. The end. And that's Terry Lee for season two. This is Tracy Murdoch with Your Twin Mom, <laughs> author of Zoe and Double Trouble. And we love to read the story about pain. And we have, there was an old lady who swallowed a frog and Madeline and the little unicorn by Sherry Fee. And we just want to say congratulations again for season two of the Read with Carrie Lee show. That was, uh, I, I would say, the perfect story because it <laughs> really, you know, showed the, the individualities that we have. And just because you know, you may be a princess or a little girl, um, doesn't mean that you're not strong and brave and you want, you know, you don't have to do all the things that people expect you to do. You can do so much more. And I, I really appreciate that story, definitely, uh, personally <laughs> as well. Uh, so what made you write this story? Well, I, I'm a big believer in gender equality. And I think by adding labels, particularly to our girls and our boys, I think we limit their potential. Mm -hmm. So by saying, you know, a lot of little girls love princess stories. So they feel that they need to be what a princess is. And that could be, you know, sweet and kind and gentle. But that limits limits us. I think we need to just be who we are. And it doesn't mean, I mean, princesses can be strong and loud as we yes. see. And then dragons, like we don't actually have to assume that dragons are mean and nasty. Just like our uh, not so dreadful dragon, he's actually a very kind and gentle person. Just like many of our, our boys are kind and gentle people as well. They don't always have to be tough and strong. So those are yes. uh, very feminine qualities are really important to have as well as the more masculine qualities, but they don't have to be limited to girls and boys. So I don't think labels work very well. And I think we just need to be who we are. And also I have three daughters who are very strong and very powerful and I'm <laughs> very proud of them. <laughs> that is awesome. And yes, I, I have two boys as well. And sometimes <laughs> I, I really uh, would like them to be um, gentler <laughs> instead of wrestling with each other all the time. <laughs> so That's yes. right. Yes, Gentle absolutely. qualities are lovely too. Yeah, exactly. We should celebrate both the strength and we should celebrate our gentler qualities as yes. well. So I think that that is just, this book is about swapping it over and just mixing the messages up. And I think mm -hmm. we all need to have a little think about that. And, yes. you know, in the story, the uh, parents just assume the dragon's mm -hmm. going to be mean and nasty, but they're judging that dragon before they even meet him. Yeah. So we need and to think about judging people as well. Exactly. And, and that's one of the things that I actually, um, uh, that really caught my eye um, in the story, especially when uh, the princess, Princess Petal actually stood up for her friend and mm. she was mm. the one to say to her parents, you know, no, he's not mean and scary. He's gentle and kind. So, you know, sometimes we need to stick up for our friends and, and let others know that, you know, that they're kind and that they're not as scary as some people may think that they are. So, mm -hmm. yes, very important messages all throughout the story. And I'm so glad that you were able to bring this to us all the way from Australia. So, um, 
I know that, you know, we have big name authors here, like Dr. Seuss, um, that a lot of authors are inspired by. Are, were there any authors or stories that you were inspired by uh, when you were growing up? And are they Australian or are they from, you know, different countries? Well, you know, when I was growing up, um, I lived on a farm and I had a lot of, I had horses. So I read a lot of horse stories. Okay. So I guess, yeah, lots of horse stories and I really did enjoy all of that. But I think more so I remember these books as my children were growing up. I love um, The Giving Tree by Shel Stevenson. Oh. Yes. Um, I really think that is the most beautiful story. And that was the first book I gave to my uh, oldest daughter. And I also love Roald Dahl. I think there's so many wonderful messages in his mm -hmm. stories as well. So I think um, I do love a story with some kind of message that you can unpack with kids. And that's why in my books, I always put discussion questions in the back because I was a teacher. So that comes yeah. naturally for me. Okay. So I like to put discussion questions in the back so we can unpack the messages in my books, you know, the moral behind them and what I'm trying to, to get across. So I think any stories with that kind of um, message is really important to me. Mm. Yes, absolutely. And Shel Silverstein seems to be the in the Giving Tree seems to be one of the popular books amongst our authors here on Read with Carolee. I think uh, you may be the third or fourth author that has uh, given that as their favorite book growing up, or one of their favorite books growing up. So I. Definitely, I do not have that personally in my collection, but I think I'm going to go and order that now yeah. and make sure that my sons um, read that. <laughs> because, you know, that story too, it's only really in black and white. It has very little color. So yeah. it doesn't have all the, you know, the most wonderful illustrator in the world and all those things. Yeah. But the message is so powerful about giving and empathy and kindness. And it really hits to the heart of uh, all, all of us. So it doesn't need all the bells and whistles. It's just a very simple story with simple illustrations, but very powerful. Mm. Okay. And I know that you are an author of several books. So could you uh, tell us about some of um, your books that, you know, our audience could possibly find on Amazon or, um, and, you know, we will have your links below as to where they'll be able to find that. Sure. Well, I, I, um, I began writing firstly, I do write under another name, uh, as Jay Dale, for a Catstone Classroom, and I write children's readers. So I oh. do have a sort of a background in publishing with, so, with readers. But the books that I write under this name, Janine Sanders, my married name, uh, are based around body safety, uh, gender equality, yes. and social and emotional intelligence. So I have books that, you know, uh, No Means No is one of my books, or Let's Talk About Body Boundaries, Consent and Respect. So I do mm -hmm. nonfiction and fiction. And also I have ones on, you know, um, Let's Talk About Feelings, How Big Are Your Worries, Little Bear. So I try to do stories that are very, uh, have a lot of meaning, and we can help children with their issues and problems as well. But the body safety is very important to me. And that's empowering children about their body is their body. And no one has the right to touch it or come into their body boundary space. So I, I have quite a number of books on consent and body okay. safety. Mm. That, and that's wonderful. So you definitely can go and pick up some of Janine Sanders' books and, you know, help your children to be able to express themselves and know the things that may harm them. And, you know, knowing that no means no. And that is definitely um, lessons that, those are definitely lessons that our children need to know. And it seems your books are packed with those lessons. And I am so glad that you were able to bring um, the not so perfect princess and um, 
I'm forgetting the end of it, sorry. And, and, and the not so dreadful, dreadful, dreadful dress. Yes. yes. It's, a long, it's I, a long title. <laughs> yes. But I'm so glad that you were able to read that for us so that we can see that it's not all face value and we don't all have to be the image that um, others put on us. So thank okay. you again for joining us all the way from Melbourne, Australia. And thank you, our audience, for joining us for another Read with Carolee, where you don't know where we will have our next author coming to you from. It may be from across the U.S., down the street, or even around the world, where today it is for you, Janine, Janine Sunday, and it is still Saturday here. So <laughs> thank you again for joining us. And always remember to grab a book and read. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another amazing episode of the Read with Carolee show. We have amazing authors coming by every week. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. You don't want to miss a thing.